So welcome back. We're here for a uh, problems lecture on section 2.7, combining functions. I, I haven't selected yet the problems. So we're going to be flying by the seat of our pants here. Um, I'm just running a little bit short on time as I get ready for a meeting here. So um, you've got the two movies on section 2.6 and section 2.3 now. So you've got a bunch of problems there, and in typical fashion, we've kind of run out of time on the third section. So I'll still do just as many, but I'm not, I don't have them written out in advance, uh, so we're going to write them as we go. So let's get started. 2.7, combining functions. Uh, this was the section where we're adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, or composing functions together. So let's go ahead and, and find something like this. So question 17 says, find the domain of the function, and here it is, f of x equals square root of x plus 3 minus x. So in problems like this, you know, you, you need to look at what we're dealing with. Here's one function, g of x, square root of x. Here's another function, h of x. It's a different function altogether. And they don't have the same domain. This one has the domain of every non-negative number. Plug in anything you want that's positive or 0. This one on the right, though, is a little bit different. We have to plug in any number less than or equal to x. Right? If we plug in a negative result to that x, what do we get? We get a 3 plus something. So it's OK to plug in negatives now. The positives are the issues. It turns out we can plug in things up to 3, nothing bigger. So now the domain of this big function, which is the sum of these two functions, is going to be the intersection of these sets. So the set of all x such that x is positive intersected with the set of all x such that x is less than or equal to 3. We take that intersection and what do we get? We get this. We get an interval which goes from 0 to 3. If we plug in anything less than 0 to this sum, we have a problem here. If we plug in anything bigger than 3, we have a problem here, because we can't take square roots and negatives. So the domain is the intersection of the two. It's where both of them can accept an input, and it's this interval from 0 to 3. That's question 17. Uh, next one here, we'll do question 18. It's again finding the domain of a function. And 18 is a nasty one. f of x is square root of x plus 4. That's not a square root sign. x plus 4 minus square root of 1 minus x over x. Yikes. Find the domain. So we've got some issues here. We've got one function here x plus 4. right? We've got another function here, which is square root of 1 minus x over x. We need to find each function's domain, and then take the intersection again, because we've got a, we've got a subtraction here of these two functions. But this function on the left, it's, it's easier. We, we can plug in anything greater than or equal to 4, negative 4. right? That, that'll, that'll give us things positive underneath the radical. On the right, though, we've got a, a quotient. So now we have to worry about negatives under radicals and zeros in our denominators. So I see here, just like before, we can plug in anything we want that's bigger, excuse me, that's smaller than positive 1. So x is less than or equal to 1. That's, that's what I get from looking at that radical sign. But then we, we can't plug in. 0, right? If we plug in 0, on top we get 1 square root of 1. On bottom we get 0. We get division by 0. So we've got these two sets. The domain of this left function is the set of all x's such that the x is at least as big as negative 4. We're going to intersect that with the set of all inputs such that x is less than or equal to 1 and not equal to 0. So we get this set. I'll give it to you in set notation this time. 
we can go down to negative 4, we can go up to 1, but we can't exceed those bounds. If we go over 1, we have an issue here. Particularly, we have an issue right there. If we go less than negative 4, we have an issue here. And we'll get negatives underneath those radicals. But then we also need to remember that we can't have 0. So this one is uh, the first interesting thing graphically. Negative 4, solid, 1, solid line. We can highlight everything in between these, but we need to have an open hole at 0. Right, so I, I highlighted everything, but maybe I'll go back and change that. That's what this graph actually looks like. The domain of this graph, this function looks like that. There's a, it's an interval with a hole in it. And that's because we're, we're dividing by x there. So that's, that's the domain here for question 18. Um, so how about something like this? Question, um, question 28. Question 28 deals with composition of functions. And so we've got two functions. The first one is f of x is 2x minus 3 g of x is 4 minus x squared and 28 says compute f of f of 2. Another way of writing that is like we saw f circle f which means f of f of 2. Okay, So how do we do this? Well first we need to figure out what f of 2 is and then we're going to plug that back in to the function f. So f of 2 is 2 times 2 minus 3 which is 4 minus 3 which is 1. And then we're going to take that and we're going to plug it in. Right so f of f of 2 we're going to put that right here but what is that numerically? It's just 1. So f of 2 is 1. So f of f of 2 is really f of 1. You see that? Right, this, this 1 is replacing that f of 2. We've taken the output of our first function. We're using it as the input of our next function, which just so happens to be the exact same function. So what's f of 1? It's 2 times 1 minus 3. It's 2 minus 3 negative 1. That's f of f of 2 when our function f is 2x minus 3. <clears throat> what is g of g of 3? That's part b. We could again rewrite this using the composition notation g little circle g of 3. So g is 4 minus x squared. 4 minus x squared. We just got to remember that. 4 minus x squared. So this, we just need to first figure out what is g of 3? What is this internal part? So we get 4 minus 3 squared. It's 4 minus 9, so that's negative 5. This is our input for the next one. So g of, g of 3 is really just g of negative 5. So we get 4 minus negative 5 squared, which is 4 minus 25, positive 25, right? So 4 minus positive 25, which gives us negative 21. That is g of g of 3. 31, same functions is asking what is f of g of any input, any input, f of g of x. Another way to write that is f of g of x. So you're plugging in the whole function g into the function of x. 
So we'll go back up and refresh our memory. What is F and what is G? 2x minus 3. So I'll need to put these over here on the right side so that we can remember those. Okay, so we're going to take the function of G, we're going to plug it into F. So F is 2 x minus 3, but instead of x, we have to plug in the whole thing, g of x. We have to plug that whole thing in there. We're replacing the variable with another function, and then we're going to expand that out. So this is 2 times, what, 4 minus x squared minus 3. So now we'll, we'll distribute. This is 8 minus 2x squared minus 3, and then we'll just simplify it down. This is 8, excuse me, this is 5 minus 2x squared, and that is f of g of x. Done. Okay. The next question that we'll deal with is <coughs> composition. Composition, composition. Uh, and looking at domains. So the first one we'll look at is, uh, yeah, we'll look at, um, look at question 51. It's always a great number, 51. So 51 says f of x is 1 over x, g of x is equal to 2x plus 4. And we're being asked to find the domain of uh, every composition. So we're going to find the domain first of f of f. So first, let's, let's take a look at what it turns into. I think that's a, a good exercise. So f of x is 1 over x. So f of f of x is 1 over f of x which is 1 over 1 over x. If we do our fancy multiplication stuff, multiply by the reciprocal, the denominator on top and bottom, then we get this is just equal to x. Okay, now, if I asked you what the domain of this function was, you'd probably say it's all reals. You can, you can just if I ask you for a random number, x, say, give me a real number, you can, you're can you allowed to give me any real number you want. Most, most people will pick an integer, or they'll pick something close to zero, relatively small. Um, but you're still allowed to pick any real number. But that's actually not the domain of this function. Remember, there's an exchange here. We take the function f, we plug something into it. We hand that off. Whatever that output is, we hand that off to the next thing in line, which is the same function. Right? So, whatever you are plugging in here, you need to be able to compute here, and you need to be able to compute the output of that here. So, the first function plays a crucial role in these compositions. The first function needs to be able to handle whatever input you throw at it. And that original function has a hole in its domain. x can't equal 0. So in this, in this composition simplification process that I just did, we get this result that the composition is just the identity. Whatever you plug in, you get out. Right, you plug in x, you get x out. But that's only for elements in your domain. It's not true that if you plug in 0 to this composition that you get 0 out. If you plug in 0, you get this. 1 over 1 over 0. And I don't I can divide 1 by lots of numbers, but I don't know how to divide it by 0. So that's a big problem. Okay, 
So this first function does not allow us to input 0. The second function, I'm sorry, and that's the first thing you need to consider is, what are the, what's, what's the domain? What are the holes in my first function's domain? We can't have those. In the overarching scheme of things of this composition, we can't allow those. So, so right away in our domain for the composition, we can't have 0. Anything the first function doesn't allow for an input, you can't have in your input for the last one. The next thing to consider is what about your second one? Okay. Well, the second one we can't have zero either, can we? But now the process is a little more complicated. So now the question is, can our first function ever give us a zero. We know we can't plug in zero to the next function in the line, so the question is, is our output of the first one zero ever? The answer in this problem is, is no. One over x does not equal zero for any x. So we're good. There's nothing that will plug in to the first function that'll cause division by zero in the next function. So we're good. So the domain is any x such that just x is not 0. Doesn't matter. Uh, you know, anything else. So, OK, how about the next one? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this one, <clears throat> f of g. And then I'm gonna have to, we're going to have to call this one, I think. Um, the rest of this section is not, you know, it's, it's not too bad. Composing functions, you'll you'll do it just like we're doing here. You've seen this several times. Um, you're finding domains just like we're doing here. Um, maybe there'll be roots. Maybe there'll be squares. Things like that. But it's it's exactly the same process. So we still have the same functions. One f of x is one over x, and g of x is two x plus four. So I'm going to first write this out like I did before in a simplifying process. So this is f of g. So f is one over x. And I'm plugging in g of x to that. So that's 1 over 2x plus 4. OK. So that is our composed function. And the questions that I asked before were, you know, first, the first function. That's the first thing that we plug it into. So does it have any limitations on its domain? And that was the function 2x plus 4. And that function has no limitations. There's nothing wrong with plugging any real number into that function. It's a line. Okay. Then there's a handoff. We take that result and we plug it into f. So we ask ourselves, does f have any issues? Yes, f is 1 over x. So x can't equal 0 for us. But our input now is not just an x. right? We're plugging in the whole function g. So we have 1 over g, which means g of x can't equal 0. That's a problem. If g of x ever equals 0, we've got an issue. So we need to figure out where g of x is equal to 0. And then we need to remove that from our initial input. We need to disallow that value. It's not too difficult in this case. Subtract the 4 over, divide by 2. x is, sometimes I think I write these negative signs. Sometimes I think I do. Other times I'm not so sure. But my pen is not the most receptive. So negative 2. All right, there we go. Subtract the 4 over, divide by 2. We've got it. When x is negative 2, we have the result that g of x is 0, which when we hand off to function the function f, we get division by 0. Right? So I'll, let me erase these lines so it's not as confusing. So when we plug in negative 2, g of x is 0. And when we hand that off and plug it into f, 
we get 1 over 0. And that's an issue. So our domain of f of g of x is all real numbers x such that x is not equal to negative 2. That's it. We just need to worry about that one. Okay, so in, in other problems, you know, you're, you're asked for finding the domains of things like this, um, uh, uh, f of x equal to x minus 1, g of x equal to square root of x. You know, you compose them together, f of g is square root of x minus 1. So you're doing this exact same thing. You're wondering, you know, can I plug anything into g or not everything into g you know well it must be zero or greater and then and then my output can my next function accept anything are there holes in its domain if there are I need to make sure that my first function doesn't give me those things you're looking at the range of the first function and, and determining what inputs give you things in your range which are not allowed in the domain of the next one so you just need to work your way down the list and look at the final result. So that's it. Um, if you want 